Welcome back to Behind the Box. Today, we're going to be reviewing The Quacks of Quedlinburg and its new expansion, The Herb Witches. In The Quacks of Quedlinburg, players will push their luck to make the best potions Quedlinburg's ever seen. Each round, you'll draw ingredients from your bag and add them to your pot, trying to advance as far as you can. The further you get, the more victory points and purchasing points you earn. You have to be careful, though, not to add too many cherry bombs or your potion will explode. If that happens, you'll need to decide whether you want to earn either victory points or purchasing points. You can stop at any time, though, to play it safe. After everyone has finished their potions, each player will earn bonuses and buy new ingredients to add to their bags. And after nine rounds, the player with the most victory points wins. So, if we'd have played this game last year in 2018, this would have been our game of the year. We adore this game, and that probably might surprise some of our regular viewers because we tend to gravitate towards cooperative games mm -hmm. or games with a lot of story elements and narrative. But this just kind of has the perfect mix of things for us in a competitive yeah. game. I mean, there's tons of variety, and again, regular viewers will know that that is something we love. There's an event card that you reveal at the start of every single round that will change either some rule of the game for that round or it'll give everyone a one-time bonus. There's a ton of ingredients and each ingredient has loads of variety to them so you can mix and match them and kind of have endless possibilities and a brand new puzzle every time you play and mm -hmm. how the game's going to proceed. And once you get more familiar with the game, you can flip the player boards over to the alternate side which gives you even more replayability and more excitement. It's quick, it's intuitive, and play is simultaneous, so there's no waiting for your turn. It also starts you off kind of easy, where you've only got a few ingredients that you have to know about, and then it will add more in the next few rounds. So that kind of makes it easier to teach as well. Yeah, it's a great game to teach. There's also a good level and a good mix of luck and strategy. So you've got a lot of luck because you're just drawing chips blindly yeah. from the bag, which is exciting and it's <laughs> tense, and you push your luck and you go too far. But there is a lot of strategy in the game as well, and it all comes down to decision making and timing mm -hmm. when you're going to use certain abilities and actions. For example, there's a flask that you can choose to consume, I don't know if you drink <laughs> it or if you pour it into the potion itself, but when you play a white chip that you don't want to be there, you can flip your flask over to signify that you've emptied the flask, and then you put the white chip back into your bag, so long as it hasn't exploded your potion in coming out. This is a really crucial moment because that can be the difference between you failing right now or getting to advance and continue through the round. There's also a really good um, catch-up mechanic in the game with rat tails. So the way it works, basically you look at the person in first place and then you just work back from them and you give yourself an amount of spaces forward in the next round potion equal to the number of rat tails that are between you and first player. It's a nice, easy, simple mechanic. And uh, scoreboard is such a great way to just keep track of what it is that you need to do um, without having to constantly refer back to the rule book. So all you got to do is just follow what it says. So once your round is over, whoever has made it the furthest in their potion without their potion exploding gets to roll the dice and get the benefit of that dice. And then you get benefits of any of your special chips that you had purchased last round. And you, if you finish next to a ruby, you get that ruby. Um, then you can get any victory points or purchasing points that you may have earned. Now, of course, if your potion exploded, you have to choose which one you want. You can't have both. Finally, you can choose to use your rubies to fill up your flask or push your droplet forward. So that just means that you start further advanced into your potion on any future rounds. If you happen to be using the opposite side of the board, you then also have the choice of either doing that droplet or pushing the droplet forward uh, along the beakers at the bottom, which just means you get more bonuses. The only issue that we have with the game is the bags. Now, mm -hmm. we feel like they're the wrong shape. The corners probably shouldn't be there. It should be like a, a smooth, <laughs> like rounded bottom to the bag. And that's because in the first bunch of games that we played, and this has been true for everyone that we've played it with, you'll often find tokens will get stuck in the opposite corner of the one that you're primarily using, and you'll 
you'll explode and you'll be like, oh, this sucks. Where was all the good <laughs> stuff? And then you'll realize they all had gotten stuck in a different area. Now, we're used to it at this point because we've played it so much. Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen to us anymore. But we shouldn't have to have gotten used to it. <laughs> the other thing that used to be a slight issue that we had was the kind of underwhelming feeling you'd have when you reach the end of your potion if you'd hardly drawn any cherry bombs you were nowhere near close to exploding and you still had loads of good stuff left in your bag but you had to stop you wouldn't be able to continue drawing chips and earning more points and getting more bonuses Mm -hmm. it would also kind of suck when if there was another player that was quite a bit ahead of you and you both just keep making it to the end of the potion you know there's no real way for you to catch up there unless they get extremely unlucky which is yeah, it wasn't so fun. Yeah. But that is fixed by the expansion, the Herb Witches, because there you get this overflow bowl. So that means if you've gone all the way around and reached the end of your potion where there's the spoon, you can, instead of stopping there, continue to pull the chips out of your bag and put them instead in this overflow bowl so you can still keep getting points from them. Now, you can't get the benefits on, like, the special chips, uh, and it does still actually count those those white cherry yeah. bombs too. So you can still explode your potion that way. But it is just a nice way of still getting to pull out of that bag. Yeah, we love the expansion. I think that's my favorite thing that the expansion added. Just because mm-hmm. it's so satisfying to continue and trying mm-hmm. to earn more. Because that's the whole point, pushing your luck, right? Yeah. But it also adds other great things. It adds a fifth player board which is perfect for a game like this when you're all playing at the same time. Mm -hmm. It adds a new ingredient called Loco Weed, which is just a nice, fun ingredient. (laughs) It adds more variety to the existing ingredients, which we always love. Um, And it also adds the Herb Witches, which are really, really powerful. They're only one-time use for each player. And so again, it comes down to that timing. When do you use those Herb Witches? When do you get the most out of those powers? I think overall, the expansion is just really good. It doesn't bloat the game at all. Mm-hmm. It doesn't add anything that's unnecessary. Just a really great addition to the game. Yeah. The only thing that um, we wish they would have put in there is just some more of those event cards. Because yeah. it kind of feels like, you know, we've just seen them all now. So it would have been cool to see some more. I agree. But overall... I just love this game. I mean, you said it earlier that it would have been the game of 2018 if we'd have played it in 2018, and I totally agree. I'm always in the mood for this game. I'm always ready to play it if if somebody is also ready to play it. (laughs) (laughs) Which I always am. Yeah, it truly is an incredible game. My family have fallen in love with this game. My brother, who gets excited about games, has... I've never seen him this excited yeah, yeah. about a game other yeah. than Kingdom Death Monster. You know, mm-hmm. like he's always talking to me about it. He always wants to play it. My mum is always asking us to yeah. bring it around. She's always up for playing this game. And what I love, one thing I truly love about this game, you can never blame the game for your misfortune. <laughs> if you go too far, if you push too much and your potion explodes, yeah. you did that to yourself. You were being greedy. You were being greedy. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you could have avoided it. You could have used your flask. The amount of times I've lost a round and gone, oh god, I should have used, I should have used the flask. It's your own fault. I knew I should have done it. I was on five. <laughs> if my three uh, white comes out, I'm going to explode, yeah. and I just don't do it, and then it comes out straight after. <laughs> it's just a great game. It's funny. Yeah. It's enjoyable. It's satisfying. Absolutely, we would recommend this game if mm-hmm. that wasn't clear already. <laughs> yeah, we love it, and we cannot wait for the future of this game. We hope there's a lot more to come for it, and we will get everything that comes out. So, if you want to know more about this game, then we'll leave a link down below to the Board Game Geek page, as well as our social media links, as usual. But until the next one, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. The Herb Witches. Oh, sorry. They're, that's your cue. <laughs> In the Quacks of Quedenblur, Oh my god. Play is simultaneous. So, (laughs) simul. Start out with, there's only a few that you start out with. Oh my god.